so once again uh, very good morning and it's my pleasure to present the topic on fungal and bacterial entomopathogen based biological control of crop pest so first uh, i want to give a brief introduction about the microbial based uh, control of uh, bio, uh, control of insect pests here the insect pathogen mostly we have know that uh, bacteria virus and fungi and uh, protozoa so there are some advantages of entomopathogenic fungi over the uh, other pathogens is the mass production and formulation is very simpler easier and also the cheaper so unlike bacteria and viruses the do not require injection because this is like a contact mode the spore or conidia will be attached to the pest in any mode it will act and and it will uh, try to uh, penetrate inside and uh, uh, induce the mortality and it play an important role in natural pest control through episcutics so this one important point because even last season we we sprayed also due to this episcutics i mean good atmosphere condition the spore also infect in the next season also the same same uh, fungal pathogen and uh, so no resistance developments for fungal pathogen and it's ideally suitable suited for the component in uh, ipm so there are several uh, uh, entomopathogenic fungi reported in india so few few other countries also that uh, entomothorales mostly worked in other countries not in india the entomothorales mostly it's obligate the culture growth was very difficult to uh, do the entomophoga entomothora zoophora and neozygotes and uh, foreign scientists they have reported for this one whereas the above hypocreals uh, order we have done several work in india so here mainly we are focusing on bavaria metarhizium lecanicelium and uh, isaria so mainly the fungal pathogenesis is the infection through the cuticle first step that cuticle uh, infection through cuticle then germination and penetration into the hemocell where this mainly the hydrolytic enzyme which you know very well the chitinase protease plays major role in degrading the um, chitins of that um, insects then it's multiply in the hemocell then hypal bodies and protoplast production that one depletion of the nutrient hemocell utilize that to, uh, the nutrients and then later induce the uh, the large amount of production of mycotoxin so i will tell the what are all the mycotoxin also and finally the mortality so once mortality it will also multiply outside the zoospore i mean the conidia will formulate out again it act as the um, source for the infecting the other uh, other pests so these are all the bavaria basiana produce this type toxin bavarisin bavarulides basinolide so bronchiardi you say isorolides different isoforms destruxin metarhizium produce destruxin toxin pestilomyces bavarisin isaria and uh, verticillium so these are all different toxin produced by the different group of uh, uh, the entomopathogenic fungi so one of the important factor is a climatic factor for the success of this fung entomofungal infection is the humidity usually it prefers 70 to 90 rh if that rh was very less the production product multiplication will be very minimum temperature more suitable is the 25 to 35 is more optimum similarly the wind and the sunlight also the major factor determining the uh, infection of fungal infection so major symptoms of the fungal infection on it is loss of appetite the coordinations and less active of the insects we have observed and the cadavers the insect cadaver look hard so here the difference is when you when the fungal infected insect it look hard in structure whereas bacteria will be very soft so the difference is that uh, between fungal and bacterial and cadaver fungal growth and spore relation here again i divide two sub group one you can see the whitish fungal growth another is a greenish fungal growth on the pest so the whitish fungal growth mainly do bavaria basiana and lecanicelium and uh, greenish metarhizium metarhizium relay and this is the major common we have noticed in our uh, country but even recently we have found it some novel fungus also so these are some uh, images to you so show that astrenia alirodes infect on scale insects lecanicelium lecani on uh, pgnp scale metarhizium anisophile on the carcera here you can see the carcera image 
So here you can see the uh, growth of the uh, metarhizomes anisophile growth. So this is the ha hard cadaver. You can see this one. Again, through wind, it acts as an inoculum for infect the other insects too. So this is the culture collection from our institute ICR NBAR. And here you can see the different uh, uh, species. And we are isolated from different soil, insect and soil. And uh, nearly 200 species we have, and this is the cultural diversity of that. You can see this one, Met Bavaria basena, Matarisium anisophile, Lacanicillium, and Pesulomyces. Thank you. So you can see the different uh, um, species. So first, uh, uh, cultural and morphological characterization, as usual, colony morphology, growth rate, and spore production at uh, SDYA medium, and uh, um, this the subred dextrose yeast agar medium and biomass and spore production in the biomass and the broth. So these are all some images to show you the microscopic images of Bavaria basiana and different cultural diversity. So Metarhizium anisophile, different cultural, uh, I mean the diversity. Lacanicillium, here you can see the Lacanicillium. Then finally the Isaria, this Bacillomyces, uh, you can see. So we have grouped into based on the spore relation, high spore relation and uh, at different uh, growth. So different species we have uh, uh, grouped into high spore relation in the media and bra. And the characterization usually we use the ITS primer only to go for sequencing. And this some images to show you the coffee berry borer. You can see this uh, in the coffee berry borer infected with Bavaria basiana and uh, Orocetus rhinoceros beetle and the grub was infected by metarhizium in the farm and lacanicillium lacani on citrus green scale. You can see, so this we use for isolation and maintain the culture and metarhizium relay uh, on helicoverpa in the cotton. So, first, what after isolation from the different soil or insect cadaver, we have go for the screening pure culture and uh, group that one identify. Then we go for the bioassay. So at different uh, chewing pests like chylopartulus uh, or root grub or uh, thrips in the buds. So sucking pest thrips is very much problem. So that one we use this. So this is the standard protocol method which we use with the uh, bioassay screening at different concentration to analyze probit analysis and find the mortality and uh, mycosis uh, based on that we calculate the lc50 and the lt50 value so this images to show you about the uh, infection by the fungal growth on the dead insect different uh, root uh, borer and uh, and also the sucking pest a, a feed uh, and uh, white fly so this is one of the important things on the NBR where the coffee a feed we, uh, we have used this strain uh, PB5A that is Bavaria basiana, MA4 and VL8. These all the sucking pest and uh, um, uh, chewing pest which we found 60 to 80 percent pest reduction. And here you can see the untreated and uh, treated one which leads to the mycosis of the sucking pest. So we have also carried out large scale demonstration of metarhizium anisophile for coconut uh, rhinoceros beetle in Kerala. And we found very effective more than 55%. And uh, also we have observed this as a technology also. So again, endophytic study we have done in the strain baby BB5A on maize and sorghum stem borer chylopartulus. So you can see the treated and uh, control uh, infected one. So this is one of the technology in uh, NBR that uh, we have done this metarhizium anisophile MA4 strain again white grub in sugarcane because white grub is a very big problem in the sugarcane growing uh, belt. So this one very effective. We first multiplied in the farmyard manure, then we applied in the root zone at two different application. So it's very effective in management of the white grub. So this as a technology has already commercialized this one to few companies.
So next one is the MA35, the another strain for the maize fall army worm. This is recent uh, invasive from 2018 from other country, and it's very much problem in the maize growing areas. And we found that uh, this MA35 strain very much reduction in the pest of this. And other one is the Rugo spiraling white fly. We found that NBR PFU5 strain very effective in management of this white fly pest management. So some of our scientists conducted the training awareness program at different area in Andhra Pradesh, West Godavari for the management of the Rugo spiraling white fly. So these are all some commercially available uh, in India that the different endopathogenic fungi. So these are all the advantage of microbial insect pathogen, which already I told that this more host specificity, no effect on non-target organisms. So this multiply in the target host um, and persist in the residual population to in initiate the epizootics and also very good uh, the no toxic residues was found and usually harmless and non-toxic to other farms we have tested in natural enemies also it don't have much effect on the natural enemies and uh, like a spider or other uh, natural enemies microbials we will say it also not have any effect so no evidence on resistant to fungal or viral pathogen no cross resistance we have not observed and it's conventionally very easy for applications and suitable for one of the IPM component and compatible with other biocontrol agents. But uh, that that will we have to do screening, uh, testing we have to do, then we have to go for the recommendation. So production te technology simple for cottage and uh, large scale it may vary because we are also training the farmers to develop by their own, uh, produce the one that entomopathogen and few companies also we are selling the technology that one also they are selling through the uh, proper large scale industry production. So it's environmental pollution free and uh, eco friendly. So this the commercial product. So one of the three limitation is as it is little slow growth in action and uh, not very much suitable for the very serious outbreak. It takes some time for the establishment. So the, because all the entomopathogens grow in the field condition uh, slowly depend upon the climatic condition. That's I told so, uh, RH should be more than 70. It will be more suitable. Similarly, temperature. So inconsistent field efficacy. The reason is infant due to the uh, fluctuations in the temperatures. So coming to the mass production technology, we have developed three different, one is talc based, another is oil based, then is rice based formulation. So one by one, I will tell you. So in this liquid state and solid state fermentation, two, two different state of fermenta fermentation. So the first one solid is suitable for the medium and small scale. So this one we are giving training to the farmers through online also because we have develop is very simple and use but a liquid state for the large scale commercial production to the uh, company bio pesticides companies so that is for the uh, requires less labor and with fit for commercial and this first one is highly labor oriented even farmers can do by themselves so coming liquid the bench culture shaker culture and ferment are so these three different method we have followed this is the standard protocol we have used the sdy medium sdy broth and we inoculate and keep in the bench culture usually take 10 to 15 days more than for the growth whereas shaker culture within eight days the particular because the uh, concentration recommended by the cibrc central insecticide board registration committee faridabad they say 10 power 8 uh, CFU so that one will be uh, we always maintain that one above that so the 10 power 8 will be reach more at the 10 7 day or 8 day so we always give the uh, above that uh, recommended concentration only and fermenter will be do quickly because it's fully automatic and the oxygen will be provided by the um, uh, automated so it will be give quick growth so the difference between all these three bench culture shaker and fermenter the passive airflow in both the forced aeration in the fermenter and here no agitation even agitation there and the optimum nutrient and oxygen so this fermenter is more more very effective in the multiply so that's why that in three to five days one batch can complete because we have 100 little fermenter under huge demand we use the fermenter culture whereas less requirement we use the medium growth only i mean uh, uh, that shaker culture only we use seven to ten days one batch will be ready whereas slow growth will be observed in the bench culture that it, it takes much time 
So coming to the liquid formulation, these three media usually reported, but in our lab, we use only the subroad dextrose yeast broth only. We use this one for the uh, multiplication. So usually it requires less space and labor and contamination is not a major problem in this case, whereas the large quantity of biomass can be realized in a very short time of period and a different variety of formulation will be applied for this one. So we have go for the application of talc based formulation where foliar spray we also we recommended for the um, pest chewing pest, whereas enrichment of farmyard manure, especially for the Bavaria and metarhizum in the soil application, like, like I earlier explained in the white grub of sugar cane, we go for this one in Arikarnet also that white grub problem was there. So we recommended that one and for uh, rhinoceros beetle also we recommend enrich the farmyard manure with metarhizium and then go for applicable uh, apply in the uh, root zone area. So the advantages of solid state locally available cheap grains will be used because we have tried several solid state form. We used uh, ragi, sorghum and uh, rice and one more. Uh, so but in that we tested rice was found to be very, very good in the production, high production of the uh, uh, sporulation. So if this product can be applied without any further formulation because it's cheap for the uh, farmers to do and higher CFU count we absorb shelf life also very good and suitable for the cottage industries. Uh, yeah, uh, wheat we tried. So uh, sorghum, rice, wheat, ragi we tried and in this rice was found to be uh, very good for the production of that. So this is the production process which uh, we are giving training to the coconut farmer also. Yesterday also I have given training. The, what we have done is first to soak the rice for the for four to five hours. And then after that we drain the rice and we take this uh, 10 into 12 inches uh, the paper uh, uh, autoclavable bag and we fill 100 gram per bag. So one kg will be 10 bags we fill and sterilization using the in uh, because all farmers have the cooker rice cooker so they can do the sterilization in their home and uh, this inoculation with the mother culture we have provide the nucleus culture to them so they do after incubate at the room temperature itself within 15 days the entire complete rice grow into the, the uh, sporulation and this one they used for use the sieving method collect the spores or the washing after that they add the sticker in that and spray into the field so this is the bavaria basiana i mean different formulations rice formulation so we also tried different forms of bottle to grow this one so it grow very nicely in this uh, different uh, and so that's why I tell to earlier Gaurishi also that we when we go for increasing the yeast along with the SDY, the growth is very good in cases of metarhizium. So this we standardize this protocol. So that's coming to the future thrust work for this one. We still we have to do identification of aggressive strain because collection and characterization is a continuous process. So we have done keep doing that work as a continuous one. And because one culture will be always effective than the other culture, so one is uh, so we keep doing that work and uh, formulation going for good shelf li life and uh, field persistency very important. So we have tried oil formulation for the dry weather. For example, if you take uh, in Karnataka, the temperature will be um, less than 35, whereas going Andhra, it will go beyond 40, 42 like that. So for the management of rugo spiraling whitefly, we use the oil formulation. When you go for oil based formulation, that is somehow protect the uh, conidia that very effective in the field condition compared to the uh, talc based formulation. So we use this one. So already there are several reports there. In case uh, um, if I tell one uh, example is that uh, cabbie scientists, they have done uh, maybe 20, 25 years before for the management of locust. They have done more than eight years work and found that uh, metarhizium acridium. This is very effective in the desert region to manage this. So the metarhizium acridium species very effective. So they used the diesel 
diesel oil to do the develop the strain and uh, apply through the aeroplane on that one because this locust what will do it will lay eggs in the desert soil so it cannot go and reach because these act as a contact one so so when they apply on the once the larva they um, emerge into first instar and second instar they started to move it's a huge one hope you have remember 3 years before it came to rajasthan and spread to all the Uh, north india till delhi it came from rajasthan so this type of spore thing they have followed the diesel oil based so under huge uh, temperature also it protect the metarhizium spores and uh, it very effective in management so so that's why this we have tried oil formulation always we keep as a one one factor and large scale field testing demonstration always needed at different uh, climatic agro climatic region and conservation of indigenous endomorphal biodiversity because uh, many of the region because um, we have found only in the south or little bit we going north but still there are unexplored area in our country especially northeast area and all we never collected any of this one this so that that and all we have to go for the high biodiversity so exploitation of entomothorales so again this is another important factor that entomothorales work is not very much done in our country so that work also they should do and uh, exploitation entomo endophytic uh, entomopathogenic fungi work also very less so that should also we have to concentrate so coming for the bacteria uh, pathogen bacillus thuringiensis this all you very well know about that because in uh, in our uh, institute uh, tni also we are doing this work bt work and spore forming bacterium is a gram positive and spore forming bacterium that forms the parasporal crystal during the stage stage phase of growth so especially this work was done by my colleague dr r rangeshwaran and uh, now by dr r manjunath so they are doing this work and crystal in protein inclusion the cry toxin more responsible for the pathogenicity so we will see one by one so th- so this is the toxicology of the uh, toxicology of uh, bacillus thuringiensis cry toxin most common and widely produced by the bt strain so uh, cytolysin generally produced by diptera specific bt isolate so these are all the different form of bt toxin alpha exotoxin beta exotoxin hemolysins enterotoxin chitinase phospholipases so these are different virulence factor of the bacillus thuringiensis so more than this there are other additional factor also there for this one and cry protein found in other bacillus populi and also in uh, clostridium bifermentis so to in short to explain about the mode of action of this bt cry toxin is uh, the bacillus thuringiensis first ingestion and lead to solubilization activation and binding to the receptor it produce the toxin monomer will affect the to- uh, different cadrin and uh, um, the toxin only oli- oligomadi mo- mostly it activate to the cell death pathways that is the major uh, 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 pro- um, targeting of this one so this uh, membrane insert in the leads to the osmotic cell lysis finally leads to the septicemia and dead larvae so this is um, this is a major mode of action of the bacillus thuringiensis in the insect midgut how it was uh, inducing the uh, septicemia in the uh, larvae so this is the mode of action so next is the bt strain against insect pest so here there are several subspecies B, uh, bacillus thuringiensis kurstaki uh, target the lepidopteroces uh, uh, bacillus thuringiensis variety as well uh as why is also lepidopteropes and tenebrosis target the coleopteropes like rhinoceros beetle red palm we will like that this coleopteran beetle and israelensis target the mosquitoes this usually target the mosquitoes one so coming for the the major pest uh, thing uh, in india so far report in india several product of bt available but all are imported strain from the other countries whereas in our in our country only the first strain reported from the uh, i mean make it commercialization is from the uh, indian institute of oil seed research hyderabad so they only first done this work whereas even now in the commercialization of the uh, this product will be range from 1500 to 3800 per liter and uh, intensive research was carried out by our scientists using the native strain so 
the indigenous strain is the cry gene profiling that nbr ihr iari iar they are all uh, working on this bt so they found that uh, indigenous strains and genes for the management of leptospirosis so the first bt register was uh, credit goes to indian institute of oil palm uh, i mean oil seed research at hyderabad and in our institute we have more than 300 strain of potential uh, uh, against management of uh, helicorpa armigera diamond back moth in uh, cabbage and tuta in uh, tomato so liquid formulation of bt also standardized in our institute so ihr working on the root grubs so these are <coughs> these are all different cry genes reported so nbr formulation is the liquid based formulation uh, this one we have developed first for btg4 it very effective for the pgnp pod borer uh, diamond back moth plutella xylostella and uh, effective for the tuta absoluta so different multi location trials have conducted in the under acrip biocontrol and we have commercialized to different private agency based on the toxicological data we have developed and we have commercialized this one so this is a recent uh, technology for the fall army worm that bt25 the strain name bt25 effective for the spodoptera frugibeda and we have conducted several location that field trial so same this future thrust in this bt also the same identification of very good strain cost effective production is important because the production in by iior is the cost effective is very high so that's why i told the cost effective was, uh, should be very less because the company always need the less cost of production uh, in the biopesticide so still some more mostly lepidoptera target bt strains have come now we are currently focusing on the coleoptera and diptera based bt strains so coming to for the third part the pgpr against the crop pests so this is not uh, for our tnau this is already well known uh, uh, work as already the, our uh, department have published several paper but still i just want to add uh, some uh, point to this pseudomonas fluorescens is a diverse group of uh, bacteria and uh, we have several species working i mean effective that because that time when we started doing fluorescence for the management of nephelochrosis medinalis and rhizoctonia solani in the uh, rice uh, rice crop whereas now after that several report like chlororapis was found and very effective for the disease and also growth promotion and there are just several toxins were reported by the other scientist uh, studies so this this one i sh show you reported from fluri and coworker in the 2016 so what they have done actually there are different species you can see here pseudomonas starting from protegens and pseudomonas species chlororapis because when i study this one they told as a pseudomonas fluorescens only this strain also have in our in our department so that time we used for my study msc study i used this strain as the fluorescence only but later when they go for more grouping molecular work they have grouped under the protegens the pseudomonas protegens so what happened this insect cell this oral um, they are stunned several uh, gene activity found and pathogen suppression activity also so this is very important because um uh, why i am telling even clonostacus rosei they have say they have good for the pest and disease management at the same time for the pest management so when you bring it this as a formulation so this will be reduce the cost of uh, uh, protection cultivation to the farmers because at the same time nematode management also so we have to concentrate on this type of work instead of applying separately for the uh, fu fu fungus or bacterial management and again go for the pest management if we target our formulation or technologies on targeting these two in addition to the growth promotion it will be more helpful for the farmers some of the work which i have done i will explain to you because once i joined 5 years back some scientists who worked on the bt another scientist worked on fungus so i don't want to overlap with them so i have want to form the different new platform so whatever i done in my msc work so i take hand uh, i take that in my hand again so i go for isolation so this is already in the culture collection of the uh, nbr so i screen that one so till that they have used for the disease management only so i just started screening and found this nbr pfwd very effective for the thrips thrips pathogen 
so you can see this one this is a healthy one and this is all treated one shows the uh, cadaver uh, i mean how mortality induced the body content you can see the ooze out from the body so immediately i go for the protected cultivation here in bangalore very famous for the colored capsicum and also um, the chillies which you use for bhajis the green chilli long long green chillies so this one is like that crop so this one we found the thrips problem is very high citrophis dorsali so when we spray this one we found that this strain is very effective and also induce the uh, uh, infected one also control the thrips and also induce the growth promotion in the infected so this one you can see the rejuvenation of shoot was observed so i use the farmer's practices because usually he use the neem oil spray only because he didn't do any chemical practices so initially it was more than 85 number of thrips per shoot because we do the tapping and found that one so when we used our bio pesticide and we found that more than 30 kg 39 kg of talc formulation we are given so each 13 kg for 2% spray and we found very effective in the management of this so this is the another one is the um, they also the farmer also have the nursery and in that also we have applied and found that uh, yeah, all the thrips infected seedlings very well work nicely and coming to the tuta absolata tomato leaf miner this one also very effective so i use different dosages like i use high, this is a recommended dose by the government of india 10 power 8 so i use medium and very low dose so this you can see the this is a healthy one and this is high dosage medium and low this is the control so you can see the differences and similarly for the plutella xylostella diamond back moth again the same effect but only the pest is different the same concentration we have tried and we have see the differences in that and coming for the uh, we have tried the thrips palmi management in the watermelon because this is also one of the important vector for the transmit of but um, watermelon but necrosis viruses so when we concentrated on the management of the thrips palmi vector the infection rate was very much the virus was very much reduced and the thrips also very much reduced so we have found some uh, new st novel strain of bacteria so novel strain of bacteria and we've observed that it's very effective in the management so here you see in the control one you can see that um, uh, that round symptoms of viruses in that one and here there's a treated one no any virus any virus and also thrips also not there so we also tried in some ornamental crop so ornamental crop because they are in bangalore they use more this ornamental crop for the export to the uh, other countries like uh, gerbera we there the thrips hawaiensis thrips florum citrothrips dorsalis these are all very much problem so they use they also see the uh, pesticide content as they are exporting so the farmers use the neem soap only for the management so 2% neem soap so here we used that neem soap not give that much effective so we tried our different formulation of that one 